with a cup of tea, a ton of mats, and after two days of turmoil, it seems the worst part of my latest COVID infection is over. So I can do a new video. So welcome fellow engineers and let's talk about the reproduction of subgrids in survival, right after the intro. Mm, raspberry vanilla. Old stackers know it and beginners will experience it sooner or later. Subgrids from blueprints can't be projected in vanilla survival game. But here's a couple of ways to do it anyway. And as an example, I will use this Colonial Viper and its subgrid wings. Its blueprint will be linked in the description. And just in case someone doesn't know what I'm talking about, a lot of the stuff from the workshop you may have recognized as outstanding, aesthetically pleasing is made from more than just one solid grid. In most cases, this is because of the creator wanted an angle that won't be available with the 90 degrees attachments of the main grid. And therefore they use hinges, rotors or pistons. And everything that comes attached to one of these is what we call a subgrid. Now let's say you fell in love with a specific blueprint. Edward told us that he had also made love to a helicopter. And not just any helicopter, but Airwolf. Well, even in that case there's a blueprint at the workshop. However, if you're now trying to load the blueprint into a projector block, you will receive this. Nothing but the main grid without the so loved aesthetics of the missing subgrids. The good news, with some extra work, there's a solution. And therefore we have to do some preparation. And this is step one. First of all, we have to separately save all subgrids. And therefore, we have to create a new save game. Oh, come on, is this even necessary to explain? Well, yes, it is, because I would prefer to make this understandable for everyone, even those who don't have thousands of hours in space engineers and maybe never experienced the creative mode. And since this tutorial is relevant for console and PlayStation release is coming, we may be a little bit patient for the new folks. So we choose a new game, use custom game and the variant empty world, set it to creative and give it a name. In this specific case, we don't need any further game settings, so we can just go on and start the game. Once you are in your own creative game, you already are in admin mode, which lets you paste in everything you want instantly. Just press F10, search for the blueprint, double click on it and set it into the world by clicking somewhere the frame around the blueprint shows up green. Now we are back to the story the more experienced players are waiting for. For separating subgrids, we need to point at them and press Ctrl and Shift at the same time and C for copy. Now we have this wing and cache and paste it in somewhere to get a decent thumbnail of it when saving it as another blueprint. To make it a new blueprint, just press F10 again and click on Create New Blueprint. After that, click Rename and give it a name that makes it recognizable for its later use. Now we repeat this with all of the subgrids. And if you're not sure about what is a subgrid and what is not, there's a simple trick. Just use Ctrl and Shift again, but with X and on the main grid. Now we have cut out the main grid and with Ctrl and V we can paste it next to the rest. We will need it in a minute. Now all grids are separated and you can save everything in individual blueprints that is above a handful of blocks. And the rest? Well, just take a screenshot and send it to your second screen, a tablet or maybe your smartphone. Last thing to do in terms of the preparations. We need to know the settings of the hinges and rotors our subgrids are sitting on. Well, we can go a little ancient with this task or just take more screenshots. Therefore, we have to take a look into the control panel of our main grid. And not only for the visible parts. Since most creators do hide such subgrid adapters, we have to activate the visibility of these two. 
What we are looking for are these four hinges, two for each wing. So we note the settings of all of them. Now the preparation is done. And if you don't want to miss part two, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Nah, just kidding. But if you want to support this channel for all the cutting work, you might consider to subscribe to it anyway. However, here's step two. Now in all shortness, reproducing a single grid in survival is not very complicated. All we need is a projector and a couple of blocks as a spacer. And after lining up the projection with the spacer blocks by using the projector's control panel, we can just start welding the whole grid. And this is the result. The main grid of our blueprint is done. And that's already it, so let's get into step 3, the actual subgrid projection. Let's take a look at the attachment points for our subgrids. As you can see, the hinge heads already exist and do have the right orientation. But for now, we have to delete one of them. That's because if you start building a grid over these two hinge heads, it won't attach to the second one because that one already is another grid than the first one. After we have deleted the obsolete second hinge head, we have to manually add the first block of the subgrid that is supposed to be attached to it. And right next to it we place our projector so it won't become a needed part to keep the subgrid together and can be removed later. Now this is the exact right moment to explain why all this is necessary. At this point we already have two blocks of our subgrid. The hinge head and the manually set armor block. And the projector is put onto it because it can't do any weldable grid projection to others than its own grid. And no, lining it up to another grid as accurate as possible won't work. It didn't work. And that's because the game engine doesn't even think about counting these two grids together. So now we can load the subgrid blueprint into our projector and line it up with its control panel. And finally, there it is, our weldable subgrid projection. But hold on, actually there's still a little problem we have to solve. And that's why I told you to note the hinge configurations. Because mainly these two block rows of the different grids do have colliding hitboxes, so those of the projected wing can't be welded yet. So what we have to do now is to tilt the wing up and down a little for the blocks to become weldable. This should work just fine to get most of it done. If there are still some left that can't be welded directly, it may be necessary to set these manually because if they are placed instead of projected, the game engine is more tolerant with blocks crossing others' blocks' hitboxes. And the rest of the subgrids? Well, same procedure. To be honest, even if you do everything the most painstaking way, there won't be a guarantee it will work out, especially if some clang hits. But if you don't try, you won't be successful anyway. Well, that's kind of the philosophy of the game, right? But to make this a little easier, here's a couple of extra clues. If you have some bigger projects like you have seen it in the beginning of this video, it may be helpful to build the subgrid separately and dock them to the main grid. This also may help with the problem of the crossing hitboxes. The one thing you need in this case is a crane or a tugboat. Projection tables, they can be helpful too. Especially when you're planning on doing everything manually, they can be useful as a template. Basically, this is what I mentioned in this video. Documentation, never underestimate the importance of examining the blueprint you want to reproduce in survival. 
some ancient tools aren't that bad. And the most important clue is, have fun. Oh, nearly forgot, uh, there's a mod that can solve all this. <laughs> You serious? So, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.